How's it going class? It's your boy Jordan CS No here and welcome to another cringy ass video on the dark web. How have you guys been since the last video yesterday? You guys seen the new Peacemaker show? It's epic. But anyway, today's video is about Sony fanboys. Whoa, who would have seen that coming? And who also would have seen this joke coming? It's not like I use it in like every video because every video is about Sony fanboys. Just like every negative comment my parents make is usually about me. Ha 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 self-deprecation funny. Now I'm sure you know what today's video is about, but if you don't, today's video is about the TikTok video or compilation, whatever it is that Adam from Adam Ruins Everything made about Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard. Now some of you might remember the show Adam Ruins Everything. It was all right. It was kind of cringe sometimes. Like the episode on alpha males, that was particularly funny. You know, where he tried to claim that alpha males don't exist. You know, because they don't exist within the wolf species or some monkey species or some shit. Which I always thought that was a weird comparison since, you know, there are still people who have what's considered alpha traits. But anyway, this video is not about that. This video is about his take on the Activision Blizzard situation because it's bad. Like, really, really bad. Like, I don't think he understands this situation. But anyway, without further ado, let's begin. So I've been thinking a lot about how Microsoft just bought Activision, one of the world's largest video game publishers. And I think that news is a lot more frightening than most people realize. Not really. It's just a business deal. I really don't understand how so many Sony fanboys are like, it's a monopoly. They're gonna monopolize the gaming industry. They're gonna kill Sony. Like, bro, chill out, man. Like, I see people worrying, oh, what if they make Call of Duty an Xbox exclusive? But that's not the issue. The issue is that Microsoft can use Activision to undercut the rest of the entire video game industry and build a monopoly. Not really. A monopoly requires that you own more than 51% of the market. Even with Activision, Microsoft wouldn't own more than 51% of the market. Mainly because there are heaps of video game publishers bigger than Activision. Like Tencent, which has stakes in or owns some pretty big video game companies. Like, are we not gonna apply this same argument to Tencent? See, most publishers sell their games for 60 or $70, which they have to do because the games cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make and years of effort. I mean, there's such thing as cheaper indie titles and also free games, which usually make money through optional microtransactions. By the way, just gonna quickly recommend some good indie titles for you to try, if you haven't already. There's this one, Hyperlight Drifter, which I've used gameplay from this in a couple of my videos. It goes for about 28 Australian dollars on Steam. Next is Katana Zero, goes for about the same price. It's a very fun game. Sadly, I haven't used it in any of my videos, but I might at some point. Maybe when that new DLC comes out. So come on, Justin, better get that new DLC out. Nah, I'm just kidding. Take your time with it, buddy. And Celeste is the final one on this list. I used it in my last video. It's a very fun game. It's a nice heartwarming story. It's very different to the previous two on this list. Um, I think it also goes for $28 on Steam. <laughs> Man, they all go for $28, so, you know. If you've got, like, $28 to spend on games, then, you know, buy one of those. But Microsoft has recently disrupted that strategy by introducing a service called Game Pass, where you can get hundreds of games for just $9.99 a month. Kind of just sounds like Xbox found a gap in the market and decided to fill it. I mean, that's not really a bad thing, that's kind of just good business. Like, it provides value for the consumer, and they make money. It's a win-win. And now, they're buying up game publishers so they can put their games on the service. And Sony have been doing the exact same thing for years, man. They've been buying up games to keep on their platform. The only difference is that Microsoft has more money than Sony. 
Microsoft has bought so many game studios that they now own Doom, Wolfenstein, Quake, Halo, Call of Duty, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Diablo, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Starcraft, Warcraft, World of Warcraft, Psychonauts, Guitar Hero, Dishonored, Minecraft, Gears of War, Tony Hawk, and Zork. Remember Zork? I mean, it kind of just sounds like Harry's listing off reasons you should buy Game Pass. Like, that's a lot of games for $10 a month. It doesn't matter if Call of Duty is also available on PlayStation, if you can get it for $9.99 instead of $70 and get hundreds of other games too, that's what you're gonna do, the deal is just too good to pass up. Sounds like Sony should be creating something similar to Game Pass, which is kinda what they're trying to do with Spartacus. I mean sure, they have PS Now, but like, PS Now fucking sucks. Like, the only person probably still using PS Now is like, fucking Roam Rush. Now I can hear what you're going to say next. You're saying Sony and Nintendo just need to make their own Game Pass competitors and make their own games, $9.99 a month. Yeah. I mean, it kind of sounds like they'll either have to make a service similar to Game Pass or think of a new value proposition that could compete with Game Pass in some way, unless they want to be left behind. Here's the problem. I don't think they can do that. I think Microsoft is taking a massive loss on Game Pass, and they're able to do that because they are literally 10 times bigger than Sony and Nintendo combined. Okay, sure, they might be taking a loss on Game Pass. Would it be like a very big loss? I don't know. I hate to use an old source, but you know, Game Pass is known to increase engagement pre-orders, and franchise sales. So while Xbox might be losing money on Game Pass itself, it's making them money elsewhere. Nintendo makes video games and playing cards. Sony makes video games and headphones. I mean, they don't just make headphones, they also make things like TVs. They also have a very large empire when it comes to things like movies, animation, and music. Sure, they're not as big as Microsoft, but to say that they only make games and headphones comes across as really misleading. Microsoft makes video games, the operating system that every computer in the world runs on, and the web services that every website in the world run on. They are one of the biggest companies in the world. You do realize that at one point, Microsoft nearly shut down Xbox because they were losing too much money on it. The fact that Xbox still exists is kind of a miracle, to be honest. They can take a loss on every single video game they sell through Game Pass forever until they have wiped out the competition and Sony and Nintendo cannot do shit about it. I mean, they kind of can do something about it, like they can make their own Game Pass service or, you know, something to at least provide more value to the consumer. But also, you do realize that one of Microsoft's business partners is literally Sony. Like, I'm pretty sure Sony uses Microsoft servers to run PS Now, so I don't think it would be in their best interest to try and kill PlayStation. Actually, I should say I think Nintendo will be fine, because Nintendo has Mario and Zelda, and everyone loves Mario and Zelda, but I think Sony is fucked. So Sony is fucked, but Nintendo isn't because they have good games that everyone loves. I don't know if you know this, but so does Sony. Like, one of their games is literally Spider-Man, who's like the most popular superhero of all time, I think, or second. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Batman is just above Spider-Man. Like, Sony can't afford to make the new God of War or Horizon Zero Dawn game just 10 bucks. They need those games to be $70 for them to make a profit that year. How do you know that? Like, I'm pretty sure if Sony were to make a Game Pass-like service that had those games on it, day one, people would still buy them full price. Because, sure, they lose revenue on the actual service, but they're gaining everywhere else. Like, Halo Infinite was literally the second best-selling game in the month of December, despite launching day one on Game Pass. Whereas Microsoft is able to lose money indefinitely, so indefinitely that they can sell the damn console and Game Pass for just $25 a month! I mean, that's kind of standard practice that consoles are sold at a loss. Like, even the PS5 is sold at a loss. Also, that's a rental, which usually when you rent something, you end up paying more over time than if you were to just buy it up front. Now that's an amazing deal, but it's one of those deals that we might later say, ooh, that deal was a little bit too good to be true, because it could mean that Microsoft wipes out all the competition in the video game space, and then is able to jack the prices up on us, and also make games that are a lot worse. 
And let's not forget that all this consolidation naturally is going to lead to layoffs and worse conditions for workers. Do I really need to even bring up how the workers at Activision Blizzard literally celebrated when the company got bought by Microsoft? Like, I'm pretty sure the working conditions at that company couldn't get any worse than they already are. Microsoft isn't trying to be the Netflix of games, they're trying to be the Amazon of games. They want to use their massive cash advantage to undercut and dominate the entire game industry. That is bad for video game makers and video game players, and as someone who loves video games, I'm worried. And that's where it cuts off. I think this is a very big overreaction because Microsoft aren't going to kill all the competition by buying Activision. That's just not gonna happen. If it does, then you can comment, Jordan, you were wrong, your parents don't love you, suck my dick, or something like that, and I won't complain about it. But anyway, that's gonna be the end of today's video. If you did enjoy, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe, turn on those post notifications so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter, at JordanCSNo. Subscribe to my second channel, JordanCS2, for whenever I decide to upload again on there. Please don't send any hate over to Adam, it's really unneeded. But, that's all for today's video, so, until the next one, piss off.